Hi, Alexandra. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. It's It's been very, like, sunny today, which is nice because it hasn't been recently. So I'm kind of liking the more warmer weather. feels more like how it should be right now. Yeah. Um, this is Alexandra Variano. She is our one of our actors for the Golden Thread Women's Work. Um, and she's also my sister, so... Sorry, spoiler. Um, <laughs> and uh, oh, give it away. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering, what is the most exciting thing to you about being a part of the Golden Thread? I think that having the opportunity to like collaborate in some respect with a bunch of different kinds of artists is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I am mostly a theater person actor, writer, um, sort of director. Um, and so I mostly engage with theater people. And so being able to see what poets and musicians and dancers and visual artists um, bring into the room is really cool. And like most of it is um, art that they've already created in some respect, um, apart from the visual artists that do it live. Um, but, uh, it's just, in, it's interesting to see like different people's styles and um, be exposed to different things that I wouldn't necessarily see being part of a, a normal theater show. Yeah. How has it been for you since you are, um, this is your third time doing this show, how is, how has it been for you and, and what do you expect in the future of creating art, like acting, with someone when you can't be in person with them, like especially, you know, doing some plays that um, have been really intimate and, and like emotionally um, vulnerable, but you can't, you haven't even met this person prior mm -hmm. to, like you haven't met them in person and you're, you're creating this, this story or you're telling this story without having without being able to connect with them in a, in a real life situation. How has that been for you? It's been actually surprisingly easy. Um, I haven't felt any like real block, um, which is not something that I was expecting. And it wasn't something I was anticipating to feel blocked, but it also wasn't, I wasn't expecting to not feel blocked. Right. Um, but I think, like, I really like being in the room with people and, and like, fully rehearsing a show and um, being able to build those relationships, but I also really appreciate um, doing cold reads, and I, I think it's a good exercise in just making choices, which is something I historically have a hard time doing, um, and so um, it, it feels sort of freeing in that way of that, like, we rehearse it before we perform it for the actual show, but it's not this like long drawn out rehearsal process where we're like, um, where I mean, we're 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 like doing blocking or something like that. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, a significant amount of rehearsal is digging into the character and doing the text work if you're doing a traditional play. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a lot of it is also the the staging of it, and that isn't as much a factor in this is like just sort of simple like entrances and exits um and beyond that it it is about um just the connection that you have with your scene partner and um being able to work off of each other even like usually my setup is that i have like my script on one side of my screen and the person on the other side so it's this sort of like back and forth um thing which is sort of weird but um it has worked surprisingly well at least to my mind <laughs> mm -hmm. um and it's and it's fun to just be able to like work with people that I wouldn't necessarily be cast with in something like the first show that we did um I was matched with someone who was a very different age than me and we were supposed to be like playing husband and wife or ex exes and it wasn't even awkward like it was yeah. just what it was and I think that that is um I think that's something that uh we should 
feel freer to explore more in theater is that like being able to be like matched in a way that isn't traditional mm -hmm. um i think that which i mean certainly like seattle theater um has come a long way with um and i think there's more room for that to happen to not expect that um that people have to look a certain way or um or just sort of going off of the like type right. uh, <clears throat> which is a common thing um in in all casting um and i'm really an advocate for moving beyond that and um just opening our minds more <laughs> and yeah. experimenting and taking yeah. risks with doing not the obvious choice right so you you feel like having having less of that theater um it's almost like that confinement that exists in the theater community or in the theater like the expectations mm -hmm. that lie within in person in a actual theater kind of experience you've been able to kind of ex escape that a little bit and explore mm -hmm. a, a different side and that i think that's an amazing and really goes to show that you know we, i don't think anyone would have imagined that that would have come out of having to do stuff over zoom yeah. <laughs> over a you know a video conferencing at like applications yeah be pretty incredible um and has you know has it been Obviously, as actors, as as artists, you usually feed off of the energy of the audience of whatever you're doing, whether you're doing, you know, dancing or poetry or 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 music, especially. Um, but something like theater does have a lot of mm -hmm. um, theater as a and even even when you're doing film, there's a bunch of people behind the camera. Yeah. But when it's, <laughs> when it's just you know you and you and your laptop. And you know another person, wherever they are, it's. I mean, I'm I'm curious. Has that been, has that been difficult for you to sort of um, connect to the audience, or do you feel that you've still been able to draw some of that um, energy in your in your uh, performance? Yeah, I mean, I think. I think that's definitely an element that is missing somewhat um, from this kind of performance. It does feel more like a rehearsal, right. um, but I think that that rehearsal energy can also make me feel more free to just like play around and not have to feel like I'm, I'm doing this thing that I've rehearsed over and over again, that there's like something new that comes up every time and that I, because I haven't like gone as deep as I normally would into the script or the character that I can make the discoveries as I'm going and it feels right. much more playful and improvisational even though there's a, a set script um but the audience energy it definitely informs a lot I mean especially if you're doing something like comedy it's like right. <laughs> a rehearsal the other day and um, we were in the same house and our um, mom, who's the producer, um, was laughing at the jokes um, during the mm -hmm. rehearsal and then the next time they weren't listening while we were rehearsing. And so it was, I, was, I noticed the difference yeah. of like, oh, there's, there's not going to be a laugh there. I just have right. to know that this line is funny and to, mm -hmm. to play it as it is and not be like playing for the laugh, which is... Yeah not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think a lot comes from just being in, in it with your scene partner and, mm -hmm. um, and knowing that, that people are out there and hoping that they're invested in the story with you. Yeah. Has there, have you had any difficulties staying sort of, you know, staying creatively motivated during during this time of quarantine and pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, have you been, ha has there been anything that's helped you, you know, ha helped you stay motivated or helped you, you know, continue to work on your craft? Because obviously you're a, you are a recently, somewhat recently graduated um, theater student. Um, yeah. So you, you 
are not actively in school working on a specific thing, but you're still constantly creating whenever you can. Mm -hmm. Has there been any, um, have there been any, any, has there been anything that has been really helpful for you to continue to be creative? I think this has helped a lot in, mm -hmm. in working my acting muscles because, because I'm not, um, like actively preparing for any sort of audition, um, which I probably should be working on monologues, but I'm not. <laughs> um, but I've been able to do these scenes, and so that's really helped with the acting side of it. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also working on a couple of screenplays uh, concurrently, um, yeah. and doing research for those. And um, I don't know. I haven't been like putting an excess amount of pressure on myself to like produce something mm -hmm. but um I've definitely been interested in exploring the the characters that I've like started creating more and um figuring out how to like make them more authentic I'm very like, new writer and so mm -hmm. sort of just learning as I go and like <clears throat> seeking out inspiration from other art sources and I mean that's that's probably where a lot of my like motivation to keep working on stuff comes from is from, from watching other art and seeing people being awesome. Like we just watched uh, the end of Schitt's Creek mm -hmm. and um, just to see the the success of this show that where it wasn't like, it wasn't Im immediately a box office, box office <laughs> hit. Like it wasn't, it wasn't immediately like, um, taken up by the public but like, people have gradually discovered it and um and these these people who came from um or a lot of the people came from like simpler backgrounds um have suddenly experienced all of this success and fulfillment in what they're doing and that's really inspiring you know even people who who were about to give up like yeah. <laughs> we're, who were that close to giving up acting and then book this role and now they're, you know, super well known. It's pretty incredible. Also, a show like Game of Thrones, which is one of the most like critically acclaimed TV shows um, of, you know, the last decades or no, the last decade. Um, was like it was popular with the book fans at first but it didn't gain popularity in, into like a, like widespread popularity until like three seasons in or something which is crazy yeah. and that now it's like the the level it's at um yeah, but yeah it's that's certainly like really I, it's amazing to me that you're that i mean I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're able to find inspiration from other artists because that's that's kind of the purpose to me of making art is to you know is to entertain people but it can also be to inspire people mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing um is there anything that you are really passionate about um you're a writer and you're also an actress is there anything that you find really fuels your creativity or something that you really want to write about or want to share um or just to, I mean, we've had, I've, I've asked this question to lots of people and have had very different answers. So I'm just <laughs> curious, is there anything that, that really like fuels your creativity? Yeah, I think um, the main driving force behind what I do both as an actor and a writer and hopefully eventually a director, um, if I like, continue to pursue that, um, mm -hmm. is bringing women's stories to the forefront. Um, I think that's something that's been lost a lot, like so many um, people who have had uh, a significant impact on the world as we know it have gone unrecognized. Um, and so like pulling that forward is really um, inspiring to me. Um, and like I'm, I'm working on a screenplay about the labor rights movement of the turn of the century and the women who um, organized that and really got the ball rolling for like the New Deal um, and like collaborating with the president um, to 
to enact labor laws and to to build the kind of world that we and the um like the benefits that we take for granted yeah. today um and so th things like that um i've always been really interested in history um and i think that uh like focusing on um female figures in other times can help inform like where we've gotten to today and can also put them in a different context than we might otherwise see them in like everyone knows that the suffragette movement happened but not most people don't really know all of the people who were involved in that and also the like concurrent movements of that time like the the labor rights movement and the um, suffragette movement went together directly and um, they impacted each other and um, and so I think like showing that can sort of help us understand that like female empower empowerment is not a new thing it didn't start in the 70s it's mm -hmm. been going on for a long time for centuries and but we just don't know about the people that that made that happen and um who made their like small mark toward progress for women um and then as an actor embodying that quality is really important to me um i'm not interested in just playing the uh girl next door or whatever <laughs> like i don't i don't want to just be uh my body or mm -hmm. uh, whatever I want to be Accessor, accessory of yeah yeah um and so that changing that narrative is very important to me yeah thank you so much that I oh my god that was I love those answers <laughs> <laughs> um thank you so much for the conversation I can't wait to see where your work goes um and I can't wait <laughs> to see all that you become and I get to see it right out right in front of you <laughs> i get to watch that doesn't make sense i get to watch you do that luckily for me but i can't wait to see for everyone else i can't well i can't wait for everyone else to see you be brilliant and even more brilliant than you already are thank you so much for the conversation and um make sure to get your tickets for golden thread women's work june 13th at seven do it do it Get them now, man. You got this. You can do it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you.